Hey, what's up, guys? This is Sohan, and you are watching Technical Spark. Friends, in our this video under DLP series, today I am going to show you how to configure your queries and reports. And this particular video you can use for DLP or any other product which is managed by EPO. This is going to be very interesting and uh, you know fun video. So without further ado, let's get started after this small intro video. So friends, very first uh, we have to log in into the EPO console so that I can show you the things which you know will help you configuring the queries and reports. So I just logged into my uh, EPO console and if I go to the my system tree then there is only one system is present right so let's go to the queries and reports and here uh, friends very much will talk about the default reports which is available so if I go to the trailix groups then there is a one section that is DLP so here lots of you know reports are available so if you want you can just go ahead and make use of for this particular rules let me just you know this is for the DLP discovery and if you go down then this is for DLP bypass agent version there's so many you know information is available so this is the only one version available in my environment because I manage only one PC okay so if you have multiple then it will have shown the proper uh, version uh, version details as well as privileged user dlp number of incidents guys one thing i would like to mention here if you check out in uh, this particular query section then you will find that all the you know or maximum reports here available that is for the data in use in motion which means it didn't provide historical data okay guys so that data in use data in motion and guys if you check out here this is i know all the rules are available in this particular rule set let me run you know one of the report here guys just for your demonstration number of incident per day yeah that will be fine see it's just showing couple of incidents so if you are not getting as you know data as per your requirement you know what you can do you can always go ahead and configure this particular rule set so like right now we have you know uh, generated this particular report right so what i'll do i'll just select this and create a duplicate report of this i will also you know uh, explain you guys that how you can configure your historical report now let me give a name here like uh, dlp reports and if you want you can you know modify the name like test hyphen dlp we'll keep the same name click on ok perfect now we'll have to go to the private because there this is where we have to you know create a group and store the report here it is now let me click on edit this is a chart available if you want you can you know use this or you know choose different different options which is available here okay let me choose pie chart here and print that if you see the the label or basis on that this report are you know generated is get changed let me select the single line chart again see the label has been changed in certain time is here and whenever i click on pie chart is go to the classification under pie chart also you can here select insertion time but right now we'll just go with the default one now click on next choose the column which is you required in your report whenever you download or see on the console like your actual action evidence file name map file match count so lots of options available you can utilize those options okay but don't make lots of rush here Otherwise, you know, sometimes generation of this report will take lots of time. Then again, click on next. Filter. This is the very, you know, important thing. Why this advertly click on? Because in, under the result type, we have chosen insertion time. So this is, you know, this entire query is built on that base. Now, how exactly you would like to configure? So let's say I would like to configure uh, and choose the condition is within the last and here I'll choose month and we'll keep this here one month now let's click on or let's say two months you can you know, utilize other options okay as per your requirement and click on save again save my rule has been saved now we'll try to run again see earlier what we have done we were only getting three to five events right but this time we have got almost 49 events so this is how you know effectively you can configure your rule and if i click on this particular rule then see all the test cases which we have run okay i got the information here 
so then uh, very important thing the reason i chose you know said you to you know add a multiple column here as per your requirement like file path uh, copy duration and other stuff okay why because when you download the excel report you will get complete information in single file so you don't have to visit your console again and again so just keep in mind now let me close this uh, now we'll try to create one custom report for that just click on new query under apo you couldn't find the dlp option guys okay here are some options available but it doesn't you know give the much information so what you will have to do is under database type you will have to select dlp and see we got the all dlp incident list here you know our table information here so whenever you configure this rule what you have to choose here that is what i'm going to mention so always select dlp data in use motion incident history this particular incident history is very important so that later on when the rule is configured you can just you will you will just tweak with your uh, time range okay and you will be able to successfully download the data and for data address there is a different report available so this is for data in use motion and this is for data at rest so choose appropriate report whenever you you know uh, configure and this basically use for your dlp discover if you are using then make a use of this otherwise uh, this rule configuration is not required okay so i have chosen this one now let's click on next let's go to the pie chart and uh, that is fine classification next again you can choose the appropriate column next uh, let me just you know uh, enter here occurred endpoint is later than what is the data let's go to two months back first march and save and let's give a name historical dlp test dlp historical event and click on save this is going to be saved in my dlp report group only save that's it here is our report so let's click on run so we got all the information all our 30 49 you know incidents are available here okay now let me go back so friends hopefully now you have understood how to configure your queries and report and if you in case you want then let me show you how you can you know configure the, uh, the same reports on the email for that you will have to go to the server task new task uh, just give it uh, any kind of name here and make sure that your you know, status has been enabled click on next uh, keep the query this particular option as it is and under query you will have to select you are private groups see these are the reports which we have just now configured right so let's say i would like to you know second report on the email so click on choose that and click on ok then where you like what you would like to do is you do you want to save this on particular any of the folder network share or you want this to be you know triggered on the email so let's say i am selecting email option here enter your email id it could be one uh, email id multiple email id or your distribution list provide some kind of uh, subject line here and always choose chart data and drill down tables then go to the csv that's it if you want you can you know zip this particular output because there could be chances that uh, number of incident which is uh, generated by this particular rule will be larger so choosing zip file will be always good option now click on next when exactly you would like to receive the mail so let's say daily at 10 am so this is how you can know you can uh, configure your email notification and once you are done click on save so guys hopefully now everything about the uh, queries and reports has been cleared with you because my intention here is just to provide you the technique the road on which you will have to travel right so you can completely depend you know configure the uh, queries as per your organization or your requirement and get more action level events so i hope guys you have found this video useful if so please give me a thumbs up or if you haven't subscribed to my channel then you know don't forget to subscribe and enable the bell notification so that you will you know always receive my email video notification as and when i'll upload the videos and if in case if you have any suggestion for me or any feedback then don't forget to put this into the comment box below so that's it for now this is sohan signing out i'll catch you in the next amazing video till then bye bye